uh, today is the third day of um, of us meeting here. Actually, for those of us who've been attending these sessions, uh, we've been here since um, Sunday for the International Youth Week Dialogue. And um, at the moment, I think someone from Youth Voice DGs should brief us on something maybe. Um, yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, my name is James. Um, let me just put my video so that you can see me. Yes, my name is James. Uh, we working from home today because of the issue of, of Corona. And uh, I'm in Kenya, in Nairobi. So welcome to today's uh, webinar. Um, just to brief as we usually do, just to brief us on what we do. Just in case we have new visitors, maybe who are not there yesterday, Africa for SDGs is an organization that is a youth involving, that deals with the things to do with capacity development to train young people on leadership and the sustainable development goals. There are those who may not be knowing all the SDGs, the 17 of them, but, but, but I know we will get time and just to do some background check on that, but we deal on training capacity and how young people can work together, how young people can network together, how young people can unite and just harness their efforts towards sustainable development. Remember these are, these are a few 10 years to come now until the, the time that duration, the duration that was given by UN uh, for the implementation of the SDGs. Um, many SDGs, um, many young people do not know the SDGs. So if we are here as youth involving organization or leaders or young leaders, let us see how we can encourage young people, train them to know the SDGs and how they can use them to, to do uh, programs back at home, back at the communities. And, and just to share briefly, allow me just share something here about us, just a, a small thing. Um, because I have like 10 minutes to do that. Uh, let me just do that in a few minutes. Um, hmm. Give me a few minutes. Yes, just, just to share something about this one here. Uh, we, we, we are a youth involving organization. Allow me just go, go to, the, to this page here on page. Uh, um, just, to brief, just a brief introduction of the SDGs. In September 2015, world leaders adopted the 17 goals uh, with 169 targets between them through the most uh, open and consultative uh, processes for that period and, and and remember this this was done after the mdgs that were adopted um during that period of uh 2015 and back but now from 2015 towards 2030 these were the new um targets that the un came up with so remember we have uh, um the africa you know the countries in africa I've been looking forward to the Africa we want agenda. Uh, what, what is this agenda we want? The agenda 26 today, that is the Africa we want. And countries in Africa have been working towards how can we get into, how can we make sure we streamline the development programs, annual plans, ADPs towards development that 
fit into the UN agenda in terms of SDGs. So just to look into what we do as an organization, uh, we, build, we build youth capacity to learn and research. Paris, are you there? Yes, I am. Interrupted, kind of, okay, yeah, we build youth capacity to learn on and learn uh, and research on SDGs in order to engage effectively on global affairs locally through trainings for knowledge, skills, and actual transformation. Other than that, we still have issues to do with, uh, let me go to this one here, uh, for youth to actively engage um, on SDGs processes in terms of implementation, then we have to encourage them for public engagement, public action and innovation. And something else just to summarize this, we want young people to have a stronger ownership of the SDGs, to have a strong local mechanism in how they can work together, then for effective alliances and partnerships, and even to encourage the systems, that is the government's key players in the government, to work together with the young people towards realizing this agenda, the Africa we want, the agenda 2063. So just to, that was just kind of introduction. Uh, we'll be giving every day some aspects of what is Africa for years, what are we doing? And it is because of this, we are looking for item two, this one here. And that's why we are working with other organizations like Yoba and other youth involving organizations to organize this um, uh, dialogue so that we can have a very strong partnership for young people, a strong alliances among key players so that we can engage the young people constructively for transformation and leadership in society. So have a good day. My name is James Munyao. I'm the programs officer in the Africa Positives. We're just working from home. Otherwise, uh, have a great day and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Asante Sam. Okay. Thank you very much, James, for that introduction. I would want to welcome everyone else to this session. And uh, our first uh, presenter will be Esther Neymar. She is the founder of Dream Tribe Network and also the founder of uh, Empire Com Content Network. And at the same time, she is the Kenyan representative to the AYDEC, which is the African Youth for Development Commission. Please welcome Esther. Hello, thank you so much for having me, Paris. And Jane, thank you also for that great uh, presentation. I'm happy okay. to be here. I'm equally very excited with the SDGs. Any initiative that is you know, there to bring great and positive change to the world, I'm very welcome. And just to show that I'm excited to be in the youth forum, you even see my hair is a little purple just to, to blend in, right? So I don't know if I'm able to share my screen. Um, Paris, am I able to share my screen? Allow yes. me to just activate that in a few minutes, okay? Okay, okay, thank you for that. You're now free to do that, thank you. Okay, let, let me see what I can do. So, how to harness uh, entrepreneurship? That that was the main subject. Are you seeing the screen properly? Yes. Okay. Okay. So how? Entrepreneurship. Since Paris has already introduced me, I'm going to skip the, the, the slide for introduction. So one of my greatest quotes that I have personally really loved and have taken as one of my many mantras is the statement of sometimes it falls upon the generation to be great and you can be that generation. And I don't know whether you all, you know, agree with me that we have had no choice but to be great in our generation and in our time. Considering some of the challenges that we have had as, as a people, as young people in this time and age, we have actually been faced with unemployment because we are also really many, we have been faced with um, depression for those who have had mental, men, mental health issues. There has been so many challenges 
that has forced us to become even more innovative because challenges or the Great Depression is actually where great innovations actually come from. So being great for this generation has not been a choice. I'm sure each of you knows a CEO or two who is and that isn't it? Everyone has a company of their own. You know, everyone is is is, is something great. And so we have had um, a lot of a, a lot of that. So we we are in that moment whereby we have no choice but to become great ourselves. And so for us, um, and why it's even more important, especially even for the people who probably who, who probably are considering entrepreneurship as an option, is to just wake up to the reality that just even in during this COVID pandemic, we've seen so many people who have lost their jobs during this season, isn't it? Or we have seen many people, you know, they start, you get a one-year contract, and before you know it, you actually don't have it. So entrepreneurship then for that person, for the person who survives this moment, are the people who usually they either have a side hustle or they have other things that they usually do with their time and they they have businesses or something that they do so for them for us it's not something that it's always a choice it's something that is almost inevitable the population is growing the people who are leaving jobs who are leaving high school who are leaving university everyone is looking out to get a job and no one is hoping to create a solution so it's equal inevitable we have the generation that thinks for the future and says we do need to start companies not just for ourselves but companies that will outlive us and employ the future generation isn't it third those people who we, we were always waiting and hoping that people will retire or you know as life takes its course that people will advance to another life and we will be um filling those positions even our life expectancy is really, really high. So by the time you're 55, you probably have another 40 years to live. So you still want to be engaged. You still want to be working. So we are having people, not just young people, who have to get into entrepreneurship and start businesses of their own. And so this is not necessarily a choice. It is something that we have to actually consider as a people. In the eventuality that you get by your, your, your job becomes redundant, what can I do? And so it leads us to us finding ourselves, be asking ourselves, how can we be the solution? You know, constantly when we are talking about young people, we are constantly being referred to as minority, like you're a problem. <laughs> but this is actually the greatest age where you're more energetic, you're more passionate, you're full of ideas, you're full of life. You are literally really, really huge, you know? And so how can we as young people leave that um, status of being referred to as a problem to actually becoming the solution in our society, to become the people who are going to bring value into our community? So how can we do that? So the greatest question is, what do you as a young person have in your hands? And when I'm talking about hands, I'm not talking about um, I think constantly when we are talking about business, we're always imagining that it has to be the Juakali sector. You have to be making baskets, you know, you're, you have to be making earrings, you know. So a lot of you are probably thinking, I went to university, I don't want to sell um, oranges, I don't personally, I did catering, you know. I did all those things, but business is more than that. We're talking about intellectual property. We're talking about young people in the world who start innovation such as Facebook, we are talking about Google, we are talking about all manner of innovation. So entrepreneurship and business is not limited to hand, hand jobs. So it's more than what you have in your hand. Whatever it is that is a gift to you, that is something that you can give to the world is actually something precious that can either bring you money, can bring solutions to the world. And so what do you have in, the, in your hand? So every individual, every young person does need to go through that self-analysis process. Look into yourself. What are you made of? What are your talents? Is it singing? Is it dancing? Is it that basketry and weaving? Is it um, selling? Are you, what are you good at? And what do you have that you can actually give as a gift to the world? And that's, that's the, the key to even deciding what business you want to get into. What do you already have? A lot of people say, I don't have capital. I don't have um, money to start a business. But you see, like even Dream Trade Network Africa, 
uh, didn't really need finances personally. I just needed my laptop. I just needed that, you know? <laughs> a lot of times, all you need is just yourself. All you need is you as the person who has gone through the journeys of your life to be able to start whatever initiative. And there was also a question of what businesses can we actually start? There are many in our time and in our age, um, we can always discover. So go through that self-analysis, go through your journey from primary. What have you, what have people praised you for? What do you like to do? What do you enjoy to do? What do you um, naturally want to give to the world and then go ahead and do it? So how then do you describe an entrepreneur? Because I know a lot of people are thinking, ah, oh, I'm not in that category. There are specific people <laughs> who are supposed to be entrepreneurs. And I think that's where a lot of people now you feel, okay, maybe someone has trekked for like five years, they can't get a job, but they're like, no, me, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not supposed to do business, but I'm an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is the process of creating or extracting value, you know? being able to provide value in a situation. That's the simplest definition that I could get online. It's being able to solve a problem or being able to see the potential of something and what it could actually become. That is something all of us are able to do. We are able to create value because an entrepreneur is a person who creates value. And each of us has something valuable to give. No one has nothing. Everyone is packaged with a gift to give. And so when you go through your whole self-analysis, you're able to discover who am I, what am I needed? For me, I, I, real, I realized my, <laughs> my love for Facebook, my ability to just post and share, share, share content is actually something that can be valuable to other people. And so I offer a lot of that and hence the Dream Tribe platform, which is also on, on a group and on Facebook is actually becoming a community thanks to that ability for me to make noise. If I didn't go through that um, self-analysis, I would never have known what I could possibly become, isn't it? So everyone can be an entrepreneur. Anyone can actually be an entrepreneur. Anyone, anyone who offers a solution, provides a solution to the existing it is able to be an entrepreneur. So to illustrate this further, I'm going to share with you my journey so that you also, you know, understand. And I'm assuming most of us are, I don't know, Paris, but it, what is the age group? It's between 18 to 35? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that is the age group. Oh, that's the age group. Okay. So we are all peers. Though me, I'm about to leave. <laughs> I'm at the extreme, extreme uh, high, high side. <laughs> so at 26, I, I, I got this opportunity when I was, um, so I, I think I finished school 20, 24, 25. Then at age 26, I was working. I, I got an, this amazing, amazing talent that was happening in the country. And so they were selecting the future top presenters, right? And so uh, we went there, we auditioned. You know how you go for auditions, you go all out. So we go for these auditions. Um, many, many people, they went across all the university and then we were selected the seven. So of course you really feel good. You know, at that age, you actually feel you're the next, you're the next big thing. You're so excited. So we, I get into radio. Every Saturday, this is me, I'm going to rehearse, I'm going to practice, I'm doing, I'm giving literally my best, you know, because this is your dream job, isn't it? So you keep going and just giving all that you can. But in the, in the process of doing all that, I, I, I got, um, when I was going to, to collect my money, I, I realized it was a little less. So then I'm informed that my contract is going to be ending. It's not going to go on, right? So at that age, I don't know what you personally would have done, um, Paris or, or Jane, since I, you're the ones I know your name, right? But like every young person, I went to the washroom. I was crying, blowing my nose. My eyes were red. Going back to the seat, I was just looking miserable and frustrated. You actually feel like your life is over. And I'm like, you mean I'm not going to be famous? That's it. You know, this is just how the dream ends and it's over. And so I remember uh, 
We seem to be losing you, the connection. Are you hearing me now? Okay. Yes, You're now good? we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, yeah, so at that time, so I'm really like, okay, so that's what actually, it's not contract ending. It's technically like you feel you're, you've been fired, isn't it? So it was at that moment that I went and registered. I went to City Hall. Those days, it was not on the internet where you just go type and register your business. You literally go to City Hall, queue. So I went there, I queued, and I registered two business, which is now Bell Enterprise Zoom Events. And I was like, I am going to be a CEO. You know, what I can't get given, I give to myself. So I started the two, the two events, two, two companies. I didn't even start one, two. Then I'm like, you mean it's so easy? Because it, it, it costs you 200 shillings to do the name search. Then it, it costs you 800 to register fully. And imagine you're already a business owner. So I even bought a book that's going to show me how to run a business, which I did. It said, launch, launch your event and make a big deal out of it. I launched it. So I did a party. I did a party to launch my future. <laughs> so, and people were so fascinated. They were so excited. Then I did the first event. And the event was to target 60 people. Watch an hour on the day of the event. Um, closer to the day of the event, I'm seeing only 10 people have registered, didn't it? You know, first you've been talking really over confidence, sharing how you're the future. Then you have 10 people to attend the events. You had targeted 60. So it's, it's the first moment you feel crushed, you feel frustrated. You guys are, some of you are entrepreneurs, so you understand what that means, isn't it? So I, yeah, so I realized, okay, so I called my friend and I'm like, bring the population of people who now came to the event for free. <laughs> So I had made a lot in my first attempt. But so it's been a journey of rising, falling, rising, falling. But one thing that entrepreneurship does to a person is who it makes you eventually in the falling, in the rising. You know, from the time of the first job where I was crying all over the place and I'm told you cannot get to, all of you who have been entrepreneurs know how many people you talk to and how many say no and the few who say yes. And when you just have that one victory, you shout like, I don't know, like you're just always victorious. And so what entrepreneurship does to you as a young person, when you choose to take up that path, is amazing. Like it, it, uh, you learn to treat, um, and I love this quote so much, is you learn to feed, uh, treat failure and success both as imposters. You know, they are just visitors. You will fail, you'll succeed sometimes, but all of them are just visitors. So they're just passing experiences of what they do to you. So be an entrepreneur, one, because of who you become as a person. Whether you're in employment, whether you're who, wherever you are, become the person who provides value and creates solutions, risks being rejected sometimes so that you become the best version of yourself. Who you become in the process of entrepreneurship is one of the most amazing things. You become, you remove yourself from that statistics of the problem. You know, you do not want that all the time you're appearing, people are like, oh, here is my daughter, she's jobless. Here is my son, she's jobless. No, you're not jobless, you have a job, you know? So when you start to believe in yourself and you start seeing yourself as the solution to the world, it changes the entire perspective. Then you become the one everyone has been waiting for. <laughs> you develop another confidence in your life because of that entrepreneurship journey. You know, you just feel like you're legendary. You know, you walk on, a, on another high level. And sometimes, not that you have more money than anyone. You people know sometimes you don't even have money. But how you feel on the inside one, whether you like it or not, you've registered your business with your 1,000. You are a CEO. You are a business owner. You own something. And so you do start to feel very confident. So if you've not thought about it or you're struggling to get a job, to get employment, or you just are passionate about something, dare to go after whatever it is that you want, the skills that you need. To would you kindly switch off your microphones, please? 
Okay. Thank you. So the skills that Continue. you need, I know. Yeah. Okay. I know I can tell you all the skills that you need, um, but I can share personally. I can share from my end. There are so many skills that you need: marketing, sales skills, negotiating. But what personally I've really discovered is you just need to be a friendlier human. Almost everyone is your friend because everyone is a potential client, is a potential customer. You're not going to go into a meeting and just sit there quiet and hoping people will discover who you are. You become the person that goes to people and reaches out, right? You look at the world in a very reflective way. You know, you're not going to be watching news and you're like, so and so is responsible for this. You actually start to think. What is the solution? What can we personally do? You know, like when you start to think of yourself as a solution, you even become a more valuable human being. Have you ever sat with someone who complaining, 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 complaining? And you start to feel, eh, surely this is too much, isn't it? But when you start to provide the solution, people want to be around you. They're like, eh, that one. Hmm. Isn't that why everyone loves Jesus? Jesus provided a solution for humanity, right? So... Not that, you, of course, you can't be Jesus, but you can actually emulate some of these things. You become proactive. You know, you're proactive. Like people are like, hey, so what's the answer to this? You're not folding your arms. You're the one. You're like, ah, let me, let me just, let me just do it. You know, no one has liked your Facebook post for the whole day. You go and like it yourself. You know, you share it. Even all those times, you become a very proactive human being. You start to plan. You know, like I told you, that event that I did that backfired, I did it in two weeks, you know. Of course, I planned, but I didn't plan so well. But now you become more strategic. You become more deliberate. You really, really go all out. You become a human that finishes. Start every time, you know, you, you can't just start a project and, and drop, start a project and drop. Someone said this statement, whether you succeed, whether, whether you win or not, is, uh, no, whether, whether you will succeed, whether you think you will succeed or you think you will fail is all upon you, right? The, the, the chances are actually upon you. So when God places an idea in, your, in, your, in you, it can be done. It's not impossible. It's something that is possible. So what you need to do as a human being is when you start a project, stick with it to the end and you'll be surprised in what you do. How many times have I wanted to pitch on even this dream tribe? But just the other day, I was nominated for Women in Business. Just the other day, I was nominated Youth um, Entrepreneur of the Year. It's like a miracle. Even when all these things are happening, I'm like, oh my gosh, is this happening? But so many times I've looked at Dream Trip and I'm like, what am I doing with my life? You know, I'm like this, but every, t- every day I need to encourage myself. And I'm like, I know what my vision is. I need to keep going towards it. I need to have resilience. And I need to have the ability to finish. So don't be the type of person who touches and go, oh, today you started maize farming. Tomorrow you're not maize farming. You're doing, I did that. <laughs> I went through that journey. But to be able to succeed and eventually succeed in the entrepreneurship, you need to find that one idea that enables you to stay and speak on. Dream Tribe is one thing that I've been able to stack on. Like you've seen, I did balance Surprise. I did catering. I even sold shots. I started a shop, you know, I did so much. I did so much. But this is the one thing that really sets my soul on fire. And I'm like, I'm very determined to actually finish. So I, I do hope that you do start um, project when you get to finish. So other, another thing, don't wait for the opportunity created. You know, be the one that creates. You know, give life to things. Give life to things. If you come and find this grass is yellow, water it. You know, do things, do things. Be that type of person that brings life into the room. Be the energy. One thing they say is don't get into a room and take the weather in that room. Be the carrier of the weather, you know. Come, if you're coming with rain, come with the rain. If you're coming with sunshine, come with the sunshine. But when you go into a room and you adapt into into all those things and of course, I don't like to call anyone mediocre, but you be, we understand we do have the culture of mediocrity, accepting things as they are, you know, things as they are. But you can challenge yourself and you're like, no, I'm not going to take, take that. And that's the spirit of entrepreneurship, even at the workplace, even in the public sector, even in the private sector, go into that space and don't take 
the atmosphere as it is, but literally give it light, give it light. And I personally believe that if even in the public sector, people working in the public sector, if they had that entrepreneurial idea of operating, they would act better, they would know better. In the private sector, if everyone was thinking as an entrepreneur, you're all thinking the same way the CEO of the company thinks, you would perform better. But if you're always thinking it's all about the paycheck, it becomes really, really hard. It's not about the paycheck. It's about creating a world that is good, that is beautiful, that we all want to be part of. So you are the dream. You are everything the world has been waiting for. Just you, 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 the person. It's all in you because everyone is unique and everyone is different. I'm sure you don't even, okay, twins really resemble, but even their characteristics are different, but you are actually the dream. Dream possibilities, dream huge. Yes, you can go and you can make baskets, you can paint, but don't just think, oh, how am I going to hustle my mom and dad to buy my paintings, which is every business person literally, we hustle our relatives and our friends first. <laughs> they become our first business person. But think Africa, think the world, think whatever initiative, how this, this idea, this Africa for SDGs, how can it go global, you know? This, this, these things that we carry in our life, how can they become even global? And we are lucky, we are living in a time where space is not a limitation. So start small, start with a little step, but keep thinking bigger, keep thinking bigger. Don't think, oh, how can I con someone of hundreds of no? Start and think, how can I reach 1,000 users for a start? How can I reach 1 million users? And how can I reach even more, you know? Because you're, you're, you're becoming employers. You're becoming the, the next employers. You don't just want it to stick to employing myself, then just one person or two people. What if it could have 1,000 people being employed in your company? So may we not be stuck in the hustler level, may it graduate. That's a start. You start gradually, you start with no money, but eventually because of the effort you're putting in, people start to pay you for things and so on. Let's go global. How can you traverse the global space? Yeah, this is the same thing. We're in Facebook, we have Facebook, we have Twitter. We have all this that have made us, like I said, space and time is no longer a constraint, you know? How can we correct the mistakes of the previous generation, knowing what we know now? Because we have Google right now, we can literally um, Google anything, you know? We can sell on social media, you, you know, instead of breaking each other's spirits on social media, we can use that to sell our continent and say, this is what we have guys, come, come and, and you know, be part of our tourism, you know? So, so these are the activities that um, you, you know, that uh, which are some of them have already talked about. How can you discover a new way that it can be done, you know? You remember when there was quail eggs and everyone was selling quails, you know? Or there's this new idea and everyone starts to go. It is good to, yes, uh, do things that work, but constantly ask yourself, is there a, a way that is more efficient, faster? You know, how best can I actually do it? And there's something called, and I'm sure you probably have, have uh, seen it, design thinking, whereby you literally sit with a group of your 10 friends or five friends. Um, in case you don't know, I can offer to actually show you. You actually sit there and brainstorm and come up with an, with an idea of how things can be done better. And when you come together and brainstorm and really, really think outside the box, you come up with something extraordinary that none of you would have been able to come up with it. So think of new ways. You're like, young people are unemployed. How can more young people get opportunities? Industries in the country are closed. How can this be helped? You know, so you are allowing your mind to sit there and think of even greater ways into which you're doing. And that's what the companies in the West um, are about. They really think outside the, the usualness of how things happen. How can it be out of the box? Allow yourself into the journey of discovery. Entrepreneurship is about discovery. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy, but it's exciting. 
and who you become in the process. Allow yourself to discover and to learn in the process. The younger you start, the better, because then you have you have a chance to explore. You know, you don't have liabilities. You don't have uh, much as much stress. You can still do it together with your job on the weekends. With your computer, you can still do as much as possible wherever you are. Because equally, we're not telling people quit your job because also that's another trend that people actually have. So just leave them like, bye, all. I'm going to be my own boss. Be your own boss, <laughs> and then you are realizing it may take long before revenue starts to check in. And then you start now being depressed. Then you start being sad. Then you, your CV does not have any experience. Personally, what I have had to do is I've had a lot of volunteer opportunities. I've volunteered, and that's why you'll see my CV. There's at some point it was like 22 pages. I was a perennial volunteer. But it's not about, because I always say there's nothing wrong with being an employee. You're advancing the cause of humanity equally. The beauty of being employed is you have apprenticeship, you learn, you learn on the job. You have seniors, like people in their 50s who you watch every day and you're able to learn from. But should you not have the opportunity to have that, then you have to learn on the streets. There's nothing so wrong with any of the ways because the street is, is also a very good teacher, but equally don't look down on employment. Personally, I take, I still take employment opportunities. I still work. I'm able to do either or, right? So don't, when every time you're tempted to say something like someone should, replace that someone with I, right? Anytime you want to say something like someone should, you know how like you'd be in a house and then be, someone be like, someone should wash the dishes. Who is someone? You know, someone is yourself. Every time you want to say someone should, replace that with I. Become your ears and eyes should be open to the concerns of the society. You know, be concerned with how do things happen? How do these people be? Is there something that I can do? They always say if you're the one percent of the last few, which I believe more, considering that we are able to zoom even now, and there are people who zoom is not even an option, even in right? If you're the one percent that is lucky, ask yourself, what can I do towards humanity? Because you are lucky, you're blessed. You've gone to college, you've gone to university. Do you know there are people by class eight they fell off? There are people by form four they fell off. So just to develop that, you know, become the eyes and ears of the society to just be able to see and to observe some of these things. And are you offering yourself as a solution? That's the golden talk to you as a solution, you're not the project. Be self-respecting enough to not allow yourself to be the statistic. After a year, people are busy making me a prayer request. I need to change. I need to say, hey, okay, you know what? Let me go register. Because it's 200 to name such, I think, and 800 to register. Think of something. Because in this world, you are the job. That's why they say you are the human resource. You are a walking money. You, you're the one who is walking money. You're the one who is being hired into the company to bring that company money, you know? So that which you're offering, you can even consult. I consult for public relations. And you know, actually looking at it when you're doing business, you can actually potentially make more money than you do in the employment world. It's just that you're, you're working 24 seven yeah? and people don't really <laughs> enjoy to work all the time. But equally, you could have dry, dry, dry season. So it's it's one of those. So really, really, don't when you find yourself in that situation, you have no work. Don't be depressed. Suicide is not an option because I know some some people have actually committed suicide. Because I'm like, you have a PhD, you are not getting a job. You get feedback like you're overqualified. Do you know being overqualified is such a wonderful thing? You are working money. So go. And just allow yourself, believe in yourself. Think of yourself, you and Bill Gates are actually equal. And it's fact, you are. He's not really any more different. You are. Just that he's committed to a certain discipline, behavior, mindset, and that is why he becomes ahead of you. But at the end of the day, there are even the most people you perceive as intelligent. They're actually just disciplined. The people who used to be number one in class, they just used to read, you know. When us guys are writing notes in class, they were actually listening. They are not just making jokes about it. So, you know, it's a lot of things.
it means all of us can actually be number one. Some people will, may take a lot more effort. Other people, it's much easier. That's why the self-analysis is very important. Go into areas and spaces whereby you are top. Go into spaces. Like if you if you if singing is a challenge, you can train, 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 but you can also go into something else where you're really, really good at it. So, so do not don't stay in the job seeker category for too long. Be the job and ask yourself, why not you? Because it could actually be you who is going to be the one person who employs 1,000 people. Why not you anyway? Why not you? You get, yeah? So how do you choose the business, right? Um, you want to do business, you've been tortured. <laughs> Motivational speakers have told you, you can do it, you know? So what do you do? Um, what do people need? Look at the human body from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Us ladies, you know, as, as I advance in age, now I need hair like this. <laughs> we need hair. We need jewelry, earrings. We need makeup. We need lipstick, you know? We need shirts. We need trousers. We need food to eat. We need the things that a human body needs. Look into the human body and ask yourself, which part of the chain do you want to be? Do you want to be the producer, producing in Alima? Do you want to be the seller? Do you want to be the transporter? Which chain do you want to be? Look at them, list all the hundred and narrow to your 25, then narrow to your 10, narrow to your three. And then leave your top three, the things you don't want in this world to leave without ever happening to you. I mean, you ever doing, you know, there are those things that are just core to your being. Yani, I must be, I must do this, right? For me, I would love a holiday resort. I'm thinking that's my number one on the list of everything. It, it, it's where it is. So you leave it at the top. Of course, it's gonna take a journey. You have to start with the first step. Humility, humble enough. Like for me, it took such humility to do catering, to sell food, or to sell shots to my friends, you know, to carry my bag of, of, uh, of, of, of clothes to sell shots and convince my friends to buy. It takes such humility to go through the process. But what it makes of you, who you become in the process, I always say right now, there's no shame in the game. You learn, you grow, you become. Believe in something. Believe in something. Don't be the person who totally believes in nothing. You, 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 you know, believe in something. The one thing that wakes you up in the morning, sets your soul on fire. Like personally, I talk about entrepreneurship every minute, every day of my life. Since I discovered that one, I, I talk about it. When I left Yali, I was just talking about Africa, 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 you know. Find that one thing to believe in. Become a person of purpose, a person of value. Believe in absolutely something. Remember, you have to leave your mark and it's just you who has to make that mark. Not anybody will make that mark. It's just you who's got to make the mark. You are the magic and you are the miracle. What you believe, what you believe, the power of your mind, what you believe about yourself, what you can do, how you can do it, it makes everything possible. Because in fact, at the time I was really doing badly in my life and I was wondering why is it? But it's because of the thoughts that I have of myself. But when you start to have full thoughts of yourself, think of yourself as, um, I have seen people call themselves queens, a queen shark. You know, do you not notice they walk like queens? Mm -hmm. Or King Falme, who they actually feel that. So you are, you have, that great power. God made us in such a way that the state of our mind becomes our reality. What we believe to be of ourselves becomes exactly who we become. Personally, when I when when I was you know feeling really like oh gosh I'm not competent, that's exactly how I experienced the world. But when I started to feel differently, when I started to feel I'm above this, I am better than this. I would start to experience a totally different world. And so can you. If you're feeling down right now, if you're feeling, you know, like I can't do this, you know, start believing that you can, you can, you can, you can, you can. Develop an I can attitude. In my room, I had all those um, small, small <laughs> words, quotes of encouragement. I put them all around my room at that time when I was just, you know, trying to lift my spirits. 
I would have all those and I would wake up in the morning and it, and it tells you, do not release it until it's world class. So I would drop all my joker behavior and ensure that I do something really, really amazing. I would be surprised in, in a few years of, of what I would actually eventually become. But think about it, when I was in uni, yes, I was really, I was doing well, but the only award I left with was I start with yes, same thing as the university. Ah, okay. You still have and some now, five minutes? Yes, you still have some five I minutes to go. Okay. Okay, I'm done. Okay. So, uh, actually, even as I close, I don't think that self employment is a choice anymore for a lot of people, especially if you want to find meaningful work you do need to find a way to create something outside of the everydayness of your routine. Personally, do that which you are employed to do. Work very hard and be very diligent at it because those are the things that actually accumulate and get you better results in the future. Work really hard. But equally, what is it that is in you that is yours? Are you thinking of? You may be lucky you're employed in a place that allows you to become the best version of yourself, but if not, create, create, create. Inevitable, many of us could be the people who ha have potential. And so we have to ensure that in our life, and so as I always say, for every young person, this, this has been my mantra for now a long time, that we are not interested in the possibility of defeat. They don't exist. And I think if you, if you're really, feeling very defeated right now really don't be get up rise up and take the mantle because it is you the world has been waiting for you are the miracle you are the magic you're everything and so just believe in the beauty of your dreams i am personally a uh, living testimony it's very very possible and so yeah thank you so much Perry. I, nice. I believe i have shared <laughs> yes esther I believe you've shared everything that we need to know. And if there is one thing that I've carried from your presentation all through is that you should not yeah. allow yourself to be boxed. You can be mm. a polymath. And who is a polymath? A person that can do multiple things at the same time. Do not allow exactly. yourself to be boxed. Yeah. And yeah. with that regard, if you have um, followed through her presentation, you can see she talks about party to launch a future, you know? You can be your own celebrant. If people don't celebrate you, wake up and celebrate yourself. And like Let's your own <laughs> posts. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, it's, yeah. and to bring it down to a personal level, I remember when I was in Kenya, I used to wake up every morning and I look in the mirror and I tell myself, you know what, Paris, you're a success magnet. You attract mm. success and success is attracted to you. So you can be your own cheerleader, you know? Yeah. Mm. Exactly. So... Uh, I think we will wait, uh, you, you will stay around until we can have our Q&A session in case someone has questions yeah. towards you. And okay. we will have our breakout session, I think uh, in like a minute or so. Mm -hmm. uh, James or anyone from Youth for SDGs? Mm -hmm. what, what do you want us to do? Uh, we will uh, probably want to have a breakout you want to, session. Want to breakout sessions, or we have the next speaker? Um, okay, I oh. think we can we can have the next speaker. I would also like to acknowledge the fact that we have uh, someone called Charles Ogira. He's the executive director for Youth Forum for Justice. So you're welcome to the session, and we hope in the future we we can collaborate in something. And in the meantime, I take this time also to to ask you to feel free to write in the chat something. If you have a question, you can always uh, write it there, then we can pick it up. And you can also raise your hand uh, through the, the uh, through the, what do you call them? The sub bars down there. And uh, what else is there to be said? I'm happy so far that people are giving positive feedback and that uh, Esther's, uh, let's call it personal testimonial is, is is, is here to help us build ourselves and make a better version of ourselves. So I think we go to the next speaker, who is Phoebe. Phoebe, are you there? 
TB minor. Is Phoebe there with us? James, can you please confirm Phoebe? I, th I think she's, she's, she's not around for now, so... Maybe Esther can continue as we come up with the uh, the breakout sessions. Then after that, maybe Phoebe will be back and she'll be able to proceed. Okay, perfect. So yes, I think- maybe. Esther can continue. Okay, so anyone who has questions or something uh, you would want to ask uh, Esther? Don't be shy, don't be shy. It's your forum. I do have a question. Maybe I can start by asking um, because someone challenged me, telling me uh, sometimes uh, the lecturers in the university they, they train you on very good, great skills on on entrepreneurship, but they themselves they have been started, and this has been mm -hmm. even many many organizations and many NGOs, many private sector. They are always out there trying to train young people on entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they don't show them what next after that. So maybe young people have the skills, but they don't know the how. Maybe I would ask that question. Maybe how would we tell the young graduates who are out here trying to start business or, or small mm -hmm. entrepreneurship? And the landscape is really so hot, it's boiling. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Um, there's, there's a quote that says, the journey, the, the, the journey, is it the journey will show as you take each step, right? So, of course, you, you want to know and be able to predict what the future is going to be like. But the reality is you, will, you write your business plan, but as you start, it's a, a unfolding into many different things. I started as an events company. It eventually went into catering. I've discovered Dream Tribe through it. I've discovered Empire Content Network through it. So what you need... Um, James, is it? It's James, right? Yeah, yeah. What you need is the burning desire to start and the self-belief that you have a goal which you're going to go. And I'm, right. I know a lot of people have been sharing how your plan, and then they show circles of, you know, of the way to go to, to that, what it's taken to actually get to, to wherever it is that you're going. That's how life is. But don't live with the fear of the possibilities because it is true. It's not, it's not a joke that actually startups fail. A lot of times it's the 10th startup that actually succeeds. So it's, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. It is possible to fail. It's just mm -hmm. that when you're determined and you're constantly learning as opposed to becoming bitter. Of course, there were sessions like personally when I was selling things <laughs> and I'd be bitter with my friend for not buying them. But with time, I have actually learned, you know, I need to make my product irresistible. I, people should not buy from them because they are related. They should buy from me because they are amazing products, timeless. People should not buy my product because I'm Kenyan. They should come because I have done something really, really amazing. So James, it's a learning process. It's, it's you putting yourself out there. What the lecturers do, of course they teach you, um, what I, and I really, in as much as people are always like, oh, education, it did just injustice. But I feel like it puts you ahead in a way. You're able to Google, you're able to put your, to market yourself online, as opposed to someone maybe who didn't go that far. You're able to speak well and be able to convince, convince investors. So there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a good deal of what they did. When, even when you look at people like, you know, Bill Gates and all those guys, they may have quit school, but from which university, they were actually top, top performing, um, performing people, right? So school has its place. It has, um, it has the place where it teaches you something, but a lot of learning, you're gonna have to learn on the job. The same way we, we learned algebra, 
but when you went to the job place, you were now being shown how to do your work as, you, as they're supposed to do it. So most of the learning is actually as you go along. However, don't be afraid of taking the step because it's through that step that you will either fail or learn or make money. Because <laughs> those are the three things that you, you are likely to have. Either you fail, you learn, or you make money. I hope you, you, you get, you, you learn and you, you make money, you know? Okay. Yeah. I see if a, if a cado has a, a hand high, please mm -hmm. switch on your mic. Yes, hello. My name Hi, is yeah. Ife and I'm from Access Education International. And I'd start by saying that the very good presentation from Esther, we've learned a lot. Thank you. And Thank you so as much. we move on, you're very welcome. As we move on, I'd like to set clarity. I think we need to set clarity between being a business owner and owning a business and being an entrepreneur because owning a business is just owning a business. That mama mboga who sells cabbages and sells kumawiki, that is a business owner. The person who yeah, owns a yeah. boutique mm. selling clothes is a business owner, but an entrepreneur seeks to find a solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. And when you're finding the solution, you need to be innovative about it. So when we're using examples, maybe we won't, we won't use examples relating mm -hmm. to owning a business. I like when you said that everyone was selling quail eggs. We can say those are business owners. Mm -hmm. You as an entrepreneur, you mm -hmm. need to ask yourself, where is the gap? These people are selling quail eggs. What can I do to sell them better in a way that has not been done before? Exactly. So that is the comment that I like mm -hmm. to make. Thank you, Ife. Thank you so much for highlighting that because a lot of times there's a lot of confusion. Everyone is now an entrepreneur, but actually entrepreneurship is bringing the, what's the new value? What are you bringing now to the table that has not been there before? Yeah, so that's very accurate. Yeah, and I think I, I could add something with regards to entrepreneurship. You notice that we have different kind of entrepreneurs. And for this session, mm -hmm. uh, on what Phoebe was to talk about, we were to also talk about uh, the social impact uh, entrepreneurs. And for instance, you could pay reference to someone like uh, Mohamed Yunus. The, the, he was a Nobel Peace Prize uh, winner of, um, I think, 2006. And he won the Nobel mm -hmm. for being a social entrepreneur by creating the Grameen Bank in Bangladesh, which was mm -hmm. basically fueled mm -hmm. by the belief that credit, credit is a fundamental human right. And what he did he, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that he engineered the culture of microfinance in the sense of mm -hmm. investing in people that banks and other financial institutions did not deem fit to give credit. And from that, he was able to give rise mm. to so many different entrepreneurs. Another example back home, mm -hmm. someone like Wangari Matai through the Greenbelt movement, what did yes. she do? Mm -hmm. She was mm -hmm. able to create employment, but what kind of employment was being given out there to the youth? It was a sustainable kind of platform whereby mm -hmm. people will plant trees and sell to the Greenbelt movement, and, they, mm -hmm. and then they will in turn plant these trees. So what mm -hmm. were they doing? They were unconsciously creating awareness of climate change and all these other things. So there are different avenues in which you can foster entrepreneurship. And I mm -hmm. like the fact that you've also highlighted most of them in your presentation. You can also create employment through your entrepreneurial skill. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's quite a broad uh, field in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, I can actually. see, Another yes. Question. Maybe, oh, I can yeah. see there are several questions for you on the chat. Uh, and one of okay. the question is from um, uh, Mr. Mokiria. And he says, yes, mm -hmm. CEO Esther, what are, some of the what are some of the strategies that you used to finance your business? Personally? Yes. OK. So for me, when I started my first event company, like I said, I was actually from a job and I was just leaving one and I was still also working part-time uh, as a presenter on KBC because I also did media. I still went on to do media in as, fast, in as much as I had that first heartbreak. So what I personally looked, because I've also, I've tried the, the, there's many ways that I've seen other, other peers take, like applying for funding, 
which a lot of other people have gotten, but personally, I've never been able to access any of that funding. There's the other time, of course, uh, family. Family really, really invests a lot heavily in a lot of the stuff they do they did for me personally my mother some of my catering equipment i bought half and she she almost added added more then um other funding mostly it's from my own personal consultancies and that's why i was saying the scale part is very important whereby because uh, you realize a lot of entrepreneurs don't just do one thing you discover the real meaning of multiple sources of income. So if you see me one day, I'm acting there in Papa Shirandula, it's because I've discovered <laughs> before this happen, this catches on, I'm going to be doing X, Y, Z. The other thing that I noticed with other people who now really, really ended up being frustrated is whereby you have this dream and you believe in it. And there's nothing wrong with believing in anything because they, will, they, they can happen. Me, I don't underestimate the power of dreams. Like Martin Luther, when he was dreaming about Africa and uh, Africans and, and white people, how they will murder and become one. It was just an imagination, but it was not possible at that time. But it did happen, right? However, sometimes your dream may take long to catch on, or maybe it's not the time for that dream. And so you cannot close every other door just for this dream, you know? In as much as abroad, they're always like, oh, me, I, don't do, I didn't do anything. I just focused on my comedy. I slept in the car. They are sleeping in a car. You know, in Africa, if you don't have money, even the car, you might not have it, isn't it? Or do you know, like someone who calls themselves poor and is sleeping in the car, we wouldn't even believe that person is poor in Africa. But, so you look at your situation and you're like, okay, you know what, personally, I have acted, so I made some of my money i ship into my thing i've gone back into employment several times i work with my cv like it's god's gift to me <laughs> that's why it's 22 pages so i don't shy away from taking employment when it arises <clears throat> i take opportunities to work and so i've been able to fund my own initiatives however you may be lucky and you have family members like who want to sponsor you have that rich uncle rich auntie but personally, I, I found myself, like, when I tried those, I felt really, um, like, you, you, I didn't really want to feel like I'm begging. Um, though you can't, like, it depends on how close you people really, really are, then you can actually be financed. However, like I said, what do you have in your hands? What is your already existing capital? Like, for me, it, I didn't really need all those things. I bought them because I could but an event company didn't really need me to have money per se, because I went to Harlequins. I told them, guys, me, I'm going to bring you a population of people. They will buy sodas and drinks. They will eat here, but I want to do the event. So I successfully had the event allowed. I didn't even have any money when I started that. And that's why I'm, we are trying to also demystify that yes, you can start without capital because you are the capital. So start small with whatever you are, gradually go, 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 or work, get employed, get a job, or get a part-time or whatever it is, go gradually with the process. However, there are a lot of funding opportunities, a lot, a lot, a lot. Some people have gotten, personally I haven't, but it's not to say that they are not real. I've actually seen people who've made uh, money off that way. And also in the process of innovating, you just have to discover where the money is going to come from. Initially, it's not so clear and obvious. Maybe you're just, you know, having fun and doing your hobby. But eventually, you will actually discover where the money is coming from. And it makes sure, you make sure that you, you, you redefine your product and service in a way that people can buy. Yeah. So, yeah. But personally, another way is actually through partnership. I work with so many people. We pull in our resources. Me, I have this, you have that, you have that, you have this, which is what the Empire Content uh, Network was all about. Me, I have my talent, you have a camera, you have an editor, you have this, you have this. So we pull in our resources together and we are able to do something amazing. And, uh, and I think that those are some of the things that will help us as young people, especially when we don't have physical money, because we don't have money. I mean, you, you know, when you start your 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 enterprise you don't even have money to employ anyone 
So you can only come and partner and work together and do this really, really massive project. Like the TEDx Kibira, that's how we do it. We come together, we are like, hey, me, I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna bring this, I'm going to bring this, and we pull our resources and we do something massive, and we're like, hey, I can't believe it. Yeah. However, there are some businesses that, of course, you need money to start a restaurant, you need money to do X, Y, Z, but you can start with Mandazi, you can start with Samosas, baby steps as you go into the bigger dream. But also, so that you're not frustrated, it's okay to take up other opportunities that are available. Yeah. Some people have done even washing cars. I was telling you, I've sold shorts myself. I've done some of those things. So I've sold clothes also. I started the moderator. We, Hello. We, we have a, an opportunity to go back to work. I actually took it up. So sometimes you may have to self-sponsor, but equally there are some opportunities. Oh, the, the loans from the GABA. Um, I don't know if anyone here has already gotten them, but there are also such opportunities available. But don't can let Can you please switch off your microphones? Sorry, Esther, to interrupt. Can you please switch off your microphones if you're not speaking? And I, I also realize that Bibi is around. So we, we finish with this one question that Esther is uh, answering, and then we, we, we continue. OK, go on. OK, yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing someone saying, Ati, when uh, do you afford the luxury? I, I think I, I hope I've understood it right. Well, um, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, a, it's a calling. Being an entrepreneur is a calling. It's a journey, right? Personally, in fact, like you're more frugal with your money when you get it because the process of getting that money, first of all, <laughs> cannot allow you to, to jump into luxury. However, if, for example, in your innovation, in your discovery, you discover how this, your product, can reach one million people and you're selling it for just 10 books, do you know that's already 10, 10, 10, uh, 10 million? But you just have to discover that, you know? That is what you need to discover. And that's the hard part. Most people just, we, we always like the easy thing. And that's why you, you are going to take a job of 40,000 when you have a million dollar idea, you know, because you're like, hey, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go to that. However, it's very possible. You just need, and it's not even that hard. Okay, I'm yet to make the million, but it's not that hard to make a million because if you have, if you, you, if you need to find 1,000 people to sell them your product or service for 1,000 shillings, that 1,000 times 1,000 is already one million. So it's just how you're doing your mathematics, you know, you can afford yourself the luxury that you want. So this, the key actually is to discover that one thing that actually people want to buy. People are not being haters. <laughs> people are not haters. Probably you need to do a lot, some work on the, on the, on the product or the service. People are not being malicious. Probably there's some work to be done on the, on the product or the service. And so those are some of the things, even until today, I'm still working on, even Dream Tribe. It's, it's ideally it's supposed to be a membership model, but I cannot uh, make people do membership until the value for being a member is actually already established. So it's a process. It is such a, such a, such a process. Of course, we are told it is the key to wealth eventual, eventually, which is what we should be striving for, because I'm always imagining that truly if you're going to choose a path of suffering, it should have some reward, isn't it? So the key is to actually be able to finish at the end, to, to keep going, to, to finish what you start and to push, to push, to push, to push. Because a lot of events could be like the first one. Yes, it's a full house, but only 10% have paid, isn't it? So it's, it, it's some of those things. But of course, we do believe that luxury is a promise too. But what I can surely, surely promise is you will find a lot of meaning in your life, purpose in your life. You know how people are like, oh, I don't know why I'm, what I'm doing in my life. You'll never have that question. Why? Because you've chosen your own path. Whether you succeed or fail, it's up to you. Okay, I'm ah. Okay, now me, I'm an entrepreneur. Let me wake up at 1, 1 p.m. <laughs> then, of course, the results will be totally different, right? But if you have this goal and it wakes you up in the morning, I'm telling you, I've woken up at four. 
I'm like, am I mad? Why am I waiting at that for? But it's because I really believe in whatever it is that I'm doing. But at the time, of course, I'm, I'm sleeping like a normal human being. I'm working normal hours because then I'm like, what's the hurry? I hope I've answered. Yeah. But I'm, I'm fairly comfortable. <laughs> Yes, I think you have answered most of the questions. And in case there are more questions, I think we will share with you uh, uh, with time. I think uh, now I can introduce our next speaker and then we'll take more questions later on. Um, our next speaker is Phoebe Miner. Um, she's a social impact professional in entrepreneurship. And she's also a winner of the African Role Model Award during the 63rd session of the UN Commission on the Status of Women. And she's also a, a children's advocate. So Phoebe, the floor is yours. Uh, unmute yourself, please. Okay, thank you so much, Paris, and uh, every participant. I'm very excited and happy to be here. I uh, followed the presentation from Esther and I was agreeing with every point she was making because it, it resonates with me and uh, also my journey in entrepreneurship. Yeah, uh, as Paris has mentioned, I'm Phoebe, the, uh, a social impact professional, an entrepreneur, a passionate advocate for children. I'm also the co-founder for Dignified Children International, which is a non-for-profit registered here in Kenya and also in the US. I'm also the founder of Steady Tours and Travel. I run a travel company, which I begin a couple of, I began a couple of years ago. I'm very happy to engage with you and uh, I will engage you in form of uh, sharing my story and uh, my entrepreneurial journey yeah I double up uh, as a yeah social impact and also an, an entrepreneur there is a thin line between social enterprise and business plus also non-for-profit and at the same time they are quite different because one relies on grants the other one you have to do business as you make an impact in the lives of people yeah, so uh, I would begin with a story I shared recently on Facebook. I went to visit a lady who does uh, some special porridge here in Kiambu, and that really uh, inspired me. Every time I go to that place, it's quite a small place, but it's always packed, and uh, you will find cars parked on both sides of the road because there's literally no parking. And uh, what I saw in that lady is uh, a young lady, or rather a youth, who saw a need and uh, decided to meet that need in, in form of a business. And so 95% uh, of our clients are men. And what is the need that she's solving? Is uh, the need to, to, to do it, to improve the men's libido? Uh, something that is not, you know, openly talked or publicly talked about. But uh, if you go there, you'll see, you know, it's something very simple. She does simple uji and she just uh, uses the local products. She has all the, the traditional foods, you know, the cassava, the arrowroots, the the sweet potatoes and then there is something about her porridge because it makes men come all the way you know we are, it's in Kambu, but you hear men coming all the way from Kitingela, from Gong, all over Nairobi and they park big cars alongside there and uh, they'll buy. I had been sent by some men from my office to just go buy for them that special Porridge. And so uh, some people are asking, uh, somebody asked, made a comment on my Facebook like, oh, Phoebe, I didn't know that people, I mean, men love Uji until you made this post. And I was like, there's something special about this Uji. It doesn't mean that these men can't get Uji in their homes, but there is something that this entrepreneur identified in the market. There was a gap and she needed to solve, I mean, to fill in that gap and also to solve a problem. And that is where uh, we go back to what Esther was saying about, uh, about identifying a need and then coming up with a solution. And that is 
what it means to be an entrepreneur that you look out uh, you look out for the need in the sorry for that I'm very sorry you 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 identify the need in the society or in your community and then you fall in love with that need so that you come up with a innovation to solve that need and then you get to know how you're going to make money as you solve that that need and that is what that lady she's called jerry she realized that men were suffering from uh, maybe low libido and they needed uh, the strength and all that and i think she did her research and opened her, her small kiosk to make that porridge and also some traditional food and now she's doing very very well like that day i purchased things uh, worth 1000 and i could see the number of vehicles that were parked there that lady is making a lot of money on daily basis and so my conclusion was you can make money out of anything as long as you are strategic and you know what need you're meeting in the market. And uh, in my journey as an entrepreneur, uh, it started when I was employed. I'm a teacher by profession. I trained as a teacher of English and literature at Egerton University. And then uh, I knew I wasn't cut out for teaching. And so I joined the NGO. I taught for six months. And then after that, I joined the NGO world where I worked in a very remote area. I was very passionate about children. And so I worked with Compassion International as a social worker. Then from there, I, I, I had offered to volunteer for four, four months without pay. That is how passionate I am about children. I had just graduated from college and I didn't even have any money. And then they, uh, at the interview, they said they didn't have the, the grant uh, until after four months. And they were like, are you willing to volunteer? And I was like, yes. In a place far away from home, I volunteered. And then after a few months, some after two years, they uh, working with them, I met some other NGO that uh, saw my potential. And uh, they asked if they could give me a job as a to a leader. Here I'm a social worker with uh, maybe you know something that looked so promising and uh, in fact Compassion International was willing to promote me to the director of the program but the the idea to be a tour guide and get out of uh, the bush and come to Nairobi sounded very attractive. Not that I had stopped being passionate about children so I moved from now the bush area, it was in Makweni, I came to Nairobi and I started working as a tour guide. So I know it's crazy because it wasn't a permanent job and uh, given my credential and experience as a social worker for two years and was earning some good money, quote unquote, I gave up that and uh, I started being a tour guide. The first two month, two weeks, I didn't have any group because I was supposed to be leading teams coming from the US uh, for missionaries. Then after a few, I mean, after two weeks, I got my first group. So uh, the program manager had told me that I would be having groups every week, but it turned out to be different for ground that uh, it was only to be two groups per week, I mean, per, per month. So that meant there was, I didn't have much money, but anyway, I worked with them. And after three months, I, I, I interacted with more people that were coming in that group. And that is when I was given a job as a program manager uh, to lead and also to, to lead a startup project within the organization. Uh, in terms of uh, improving the quality of education in the country. But while I was working as a, as a tour guide, there are some things that I learned. I learned how to create an itinerary. I learned what the, these people need, what they require, what to do when you get to the hotel. I got to travel all over Kenya. And that is where now I got the skill of running a travel agency. And uh, a year after, I started, or rather I founded Steri Tours and Travel, 
because I already had the skills. I already had made connection with the hotels and I was able to, to start my organization, I mean, my company. I hadn't, uh, I didn't have training about tours and travel, but I identified a need. I saw there were many people coming into the country. We also had Kenyans that uh, needed honeymoon packages, uh, weekend getaways. And since I had already acquired the skills to run uh, such a business, I began, and uh, but I ran it as a, as a side hustle. So I was working, but at the same time, anytime I would get a guest, I would do my booking because it doesn't require so much. It just requires uh, the knowledge about what hotel is where, what do they offer, what transportation do you need, what do your clients need, and that way I, I ran with it. And so I have ran the company for 10 years while I was also being, uh, I was also an employee, and at the same time, I founded Dignified Children International. So I was running three things at a go, and it's not that I'm a super woman. It's only that I, I, I just had to learn how to, to balance the two, because my passion was in the children, and I needed to make a difference in the lives of the people that is back in my village. I needed to empower the young children to be their advocate and also to provide a safe haven for them. But this is something that I couldn't do without money. So I needed to be employed at the same time, also run my travel business because by then it wasn't making enough money to sustain me and also sustain the non-for-profit. So for the last 10 years, I have done those three things at the same time. And so back to how, um, I mean, my journey or rather the journey of an entrepreneur, it is not easy. It is a tough journey, but you have to, to, be, to be pushed or rather to, be, to love the need so much so that you create a solution for it. So I loved traveling so much and I love going to nice places and I needed to create beautiful experiences for my clients. And uh, after learning through my experience as a tour guide, I knew I could create attractive packages for my clients. And that is how I was able to run with the business. And at the same time, I also wanted to meet the needs of the children that were in my program. So as I continued to apply for grants and all that, the programs didn't have to stop because I didn't have money. So I needed to make money on my travel business as well as, as I worked as a consultant because uh, I've never had a permanent job. All the jobs that I've done, I've done it as a consultant. And that has helped me because it gives me flexibility to run my business and also to run the non-for-profit. And so I was to share uh, my PowerPoint, but I thought I have said much of it, but let me just share it. Sorry. Let me share. As she shares, you can continue maybe putting in your questions as she continues with her presentations on the chat. Yeah, so uh, like I mentioned before, you have to be very passionate about something or about a need. You identify a need in your community or in the country, fall in love with the need and create a solution for that. Then you have to prove uh, your concept or rather prove your idea. Like will it work? Do people really, really need the solution that I'm creating and are they willing to pay for it? And then once you prove, which should take one to four, between one week to four weeks or about one month to two months, then you pursue your passion. And what I normally tell people, uh, when you're creating a business, if you're driven by passion, money comes at the back of your mind. It's good to make money, it feels good, but uh, if you're driven by money first, you might give up in the process because money doesn't come that quickly as Esther mentioned earlier. And uh, the entrepreneurial journey is quite lonely 
and can be very tough because now you don't have colleagues, you don't have anybody to push you, you are your own motivation. And so do you really love to solve the need so much such that it keeps you awake at night, researching on how you're going to make it better and also getting to the people on the ground, the people who will be paying for your solution, you know, and getting them. That is where you prove the concept and asking them, if I made this special porridge, will you be willing to, to pay for it? And how much will you pay for it? How frequently will you be taking this porridge? And how far can you come to buy my porridge? And once you get the feedback from the people, then it gives you the courage to go to the next step, to pursue your passion, to work on it, to keep on improving it. And also you look uh, outside, who is your competition? What are they doing uh, that is different from what you're doing? And what can you do better than them? And what can make you stand out against competition? So um, I was there, yeah, after now you have proven the concept, you pursue, and then uh, you do also the market analysis, prove that the magnitude, uh, the magnitude uh, of the need, how big is the need? You know, you might think, okay, fine, I will do this special porridge, but maybe it's only a hundred people who can buy that porridge. So you have to ask yourself, is it sustainable? Is it worth spending my time? Is it worth waking up every day to just meet the need of 100 people giving me maybe 5,000 a month? So you really have to do your market analysis and also prove that the need is so big that it will be able to pay for your energy, for your time, and also for the money you're going to invest in. And then also establish the size of the target market, because of course, you're not going to target everybody. Like in my travel agency, I don't target everybody. I like creating a uh, uh, getaway or rather experiences for me to hire uh, high, 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 high clients. People who want exclusivity, people who don't want to meet everybody in a big hotel that hosts over 200 people. So I look at people who want to go to a place that uh, hosts maybe like 50 uh, at the minimum, or uh, no, sorry, at the maximum. So where do I find those clients? How much are they willing to pay? Because such, uh, such places or rather such getaways are not cheap. So do my target clients have the money to pay for the service I'm going to offer them? Do they have the money to pay for the product I'm going to put in the market? And then you also identify the changing trends that may affect your target market composition in the future. Like for example, the travel uh, business uh, right now has been hard hit by the COVID. And anytime we have like uh, elections or rather some political instability, we are the first to be hit. So I have also to think, you know, the trends and uh, the things that may be happening in the world or in the country, how do they affect my target market? How do they affect my business? And what can I do uh, to stay afloat during that period? Then, uh, then you do your market strategy analysis, and I had mentioned, uh, define your customer or rather profile. What are their behavior patterns? What are their beliefs? Uh, what are they currently using as a product or service? What is their income level? What is their education? Where do they shop? What influences them? Their hopes, goals, and fears. You have to really profile your clients because it's not everybody, like I mentioned before. Like for example, I still go back to the to the Uji lady. She knows has is, uh, is 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 a clientele of men. She has really segmented her clientele. She's not targeting women, and that is why I said uh, ninety five percent of her clients are men. These are men, uh, some may be struggling with the uh, libido, others may want to keep their libido high, others they want to eat healthy so that they remain strong 
And uh, I think she has established that they have the money to buy for her porridge because her cup goes for 150 shillings. So she's not targeting the men who want to pay 20 shillings or 30 shillings for a cup of porridge. So that is what you mean by profiling your customers and what are their behavior patterns? Like how frequent do they need your product? And where do they shop? How do they want it packaged? How do they want it delivered to them? What influences their beliefs? So you have to look at all that. What is their education level? Do they like being addressed in English? Do they like using vernacular? You know, where do they shop? You have to think around all that so that you get to come up with a solution or rather with a product or a service that fits your customers perfectly. And so uh, that is what has, has kept me going and uh, motivated me as I serve my clients and my customers. I haven't, I wouldn't say that I've grown as big as I would want to be. I'm a work in progress. I'm on the journey to becoming this big uh, entrepreneur, I hope so, as I solve uh, the community needs because I integrate the social impact in my business because some of the people that come also to serve in the non-for-profit, I am there to give them the best experience when they come to the country. So they're not just coming to serve on the ground, they want also to experience the beauty of our country. So what will I make them feel and what will I be selling as a social impact professional? So I have to connect uh, solving the need in the community and at the same time meeting the need of my clients and making them feel that I have met their need and uh, at the cost that they are willing to give or rather to pay for that product and that service. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, that has been my journey. I just thought I would share just a few pictures. That was me in uh, New York last year, where I was awarded uh, with that Africa Role Model uh, Award. And also me uh, at the game park with some of the clients. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. I must say it's quite inspirational to see and my take home from your presentation is don't create a product for yourself, you know? Otherwise mm -hmm. you'll be the only consumer of that product. So you will not make money out of it. So you mm -hmm. need to identify your target market and the size as you have said. Um, yeah. I, anyone with a question maybe? <laughs> on the maybe, chat maybe those with questions can go to the reactions and raise their hand i think today we have a shy audience uh, maybe they're intimidated by the fact that we have uh, women today presenting but for the men don't worry tomorrow we will also have a session I where have we will have comments. men <laughs> go on Uh, thank you for that, Phoebe. Uh, you shared such great insights on the things that are actually necessary other than just being motivated and excited about the process. You genuinely do need to plan, 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 be strategic. Uh, do people really need what you have to offer or you're just having fun, you're just you know, uh, doing a hobby? Uh, just as Paris, Paris has just echoed is who is going to buy that? It's not just you, right? And so I really like that part. Maybe I have a question to Phoebe. Um, I followed her journey. I think uh, she has really tied her entrepreneurship to her passion, what she loves. Is it really necessary for someone to do what she likes or what he likes for the sake of money or you can do your things even if you don't like them? Uh, I am one person who really likes talking about passion and purpose when you, uh, because if you do something that you don't like, 
then today you feel like, oh, yeah, I need the money, so let me wake up and do it. Then tomorrow, because you have the money, so there is no motivation to wake you up. But if you're passionate about something, money comes as the last thing. So you have to be very, very, especially for you to survive as an entrepreneur, you have to be very passionate about what you do. And uh, even when you get the money, that is not the end. You keep going because there is a need that you want to, to solve. Like for example, I was telling uh, somebody as I lead uh, Dignified Children International, I know I have to write a certain grant application because if I don't do, there is a girl back in my village uh, who will not get the information that they need. Uh, then when it comes to the steri tours and travel, if I don't wake up and look and, and, and give the strategy on where to find the client, reaching out the client, there is an employee who is supposed to put food on the table uh, through the salary they get from steri tours and travel. So I'm very passionate about impacting on lives through the businesses that I create and through that through what I do. And so if I get to sleep a bit, I know uh, a certain need somewhere is not being solved, not just for my customer, but the people that re that rely on that business to make a living. So uh, passion is very, very key to an entrepreneur. Thank you. Paris, we have Salim Kompo raising hand. Yes, go on. Salim. Hello, guys. Um, my name is Salim, and I'm from I'm also from Access Education, and I love the presentation that Phoebe has given. And my question is, um, how do you get to have a definite mindset in the sense that? no matter what challenges come through, you still get to maintain. Um, even if I take your example, you said that you worked for, uh, you volunteered in your passion for about three months. So how did you get to maintain that mindset? And even as you went on and you were able to be a part of different organizations, all at a go with, and they're all coming with different challenges, and also you get to interact with different people. So how would you say is it for someone to maintain that constant mind, mind, mindset where you know your focus is this and you don't change your true north no matter, no matter what? And also my other question is, people say you have to find a particular thing and focus on that. And if you choose to focus on a lot of things, you seem like someone who is not focused or someone who is all over the place. So how would you say about that? Okay. Thank you so much uh, for those questions. One, uh, like I mentioned, I, I trained as a teacher, but I knew I, I wouldn't be confined in the walls of a classroom. So I worked for six months and then when I found my the opportunity, I have always wanted to work with children and especially disadvantaged children. So when I saw that opportunity and uh, during the interview, they told me that they didn't have the money. Actually, they asked me to volunteer for six months. It's only that the money came after four months. And uh, I, like I mentioned, passion is everything. I really wanted to work for children. And uh, I think also by faith in God, uh, takes part in that because I was like, I'm far away from my parents. They don't, they didn't even have the money to, to send me for upkeep, but I really wanted to serve the children and uh, to work with the children organization. So passion and purpose, because I believe also in purpose, what am I here for? What do I want to leave when I am gone? So, and then money follows me afterwards. So I, I, I think it's cause in my mind, I don't put money first and I don't mean that I don't like money cause we all agree money solves a lot of problems and that is why I'm also in business. So let uh, don't confuse that. But uh, my passion to, to solve a problem, to leave a legacy and uh, to be there for people who need my services and skill is what drives me on. And so when I worked for 
compassion. Anytime I would wake up and go to the office, do home visits and uh, school visits for those children, it made me feel very satisfied and fulfilled. And uh, somehow I would forget that I'm still on volunteer basis. Actually, I had to be hosted by a family in Makweni uh, while I was working there because there's no way I could have paid for rent because I didn't have any money and uh, help had stopped giving me money now that I wasn't a student anymore. And then uh, balancing between work and uh, business and also the non-for-profit is uh, it's something that I learned along the way. In fact, some, somehow I would surprise myself. I didn't know that I would do that because, but like I mentioned, I got jobs that are very flexible. And one thing that also helped me keep going, I was very honest with my employers. At the interview level, I would tell them, this is what I do uh, so that it is not a secret, so that I don't have to be hiding, oh, I don't want my employer to know that I have a side hustle to a business. I don't want my, my employer to think that I'm a, that I'm a threat. And what has what that has done to me, it gave me great connections and also uh, it built not only my career, but also my capacity as an entrepreneurship. Like my, pre my last employment, I was working with an organization called uh, Mom's Village. I remember at the interview, I told the CEO, uh, this is what I've been doing. I have an NGO, I run uh, programs for children. And actually, I have a children camp next week from Monday, and I welcome you to join me. And after the interview, I was like, who does that? At the interview, you invite even the CEO for your gig. Don't you, you know, don't you fear that that would be one of the reasons that they will turn down? I mean, they will make you not they will not employ you. But actually she came. So I think I have confidence in what I do. I have confidence in myself. And uh, that is very, very key to know as a, as a youth, uh, con being confident, being secure with yourself and being true to self. That way you don't fear rejection and uh, you don't fear judgment. You're able to just be true and be yourself and tell and share with everybody and anybody what you do. You never know whom you're going to meet on these streets. They might be your next partner or your client because now my, my former employer has been a friend and also an inspiration and a mentor since I left the company. So yeah, I hope I have answered your questions. Yes. I think you have answered most of the questions and in case there are more, there'll be a, a later session after okay. our breakout session, because now we will have our breakout session, which will be classed into four groups. So each group will have a question as it has been posted on the chat. And um, I can also see that Esther is uh, about to leave. Maybe she will say something before she goes to her other meeting. Esther? Esther Nema? Um, okay, I think we can just continue to the breakout sessions and then we will come back uh, in case there are more questions. Um, please accept the invite uh, to go into the breakout sessions. Um, James? Mm.
Hello guys, welcome, welcome, welcome back, welcome back. I hope you've had an interactive session, um, uh, an, a nice interactive session with the members of your group. And uh, probably now we could start maybe the presentation with uh, the, the first group. Let me post the questions there. Uh, do we have a representative from the first group uh, talking about are there policies that protect young innovations and entrepreneurship? Yes, yes, we are here and uh, our team, uh, because they are also here, Elsheba, Mary Goretti and the rest will support me where I leave a point. So yes, our okay, question one minutes. was, <laughs> thank you. Uh, our question was about, uh, do we have uh, policies that protect innovations and entrepreneurship? especially for young people. And these were the discussion, we had six points. You guys are free to give your opinion. So we said one, uh, the regulations, yes, we have the policies, but the government or the key players have not given enough goodwill or they have not showed enough goodwill. And young people have shied away from even getting into the ag for policies, getting into everything because they feel they, that has not been very clear. Something else about um, uh, regulations, especially the, uh, just taking an example with government of Kenya, there's a policy that has been given out a few years ago on the three-year policy that young people should be allowed to apply for loans and uh, start for startups, but this has not been followed up by, especially by the county governments, because uh, they you given a loan and then maybe after one year they are knocking your door and. Um, this has really killed the passion for young people for to to startups though they have the ideas they don't want to start that because of that issue of competition and issue of frustration by the key players the other issue is on policy on loans it's not very favorable uh it's really so strict and so many documentation which makes it so hard for young people to apply especially for individuals because it's only for groups and many groups you find young people because of their nature of moving from one side of the other, you are here in Kisumu today, tomorrow you are in Kilifi, the other day you are wherever. It is so hard for young people to unite together to form a group to get loans. So most times these loans benefit the women because women are always there, you know? So they, they say, uh, the discussion was that the policies on loans is not very good. The other one is on youth on uh, being role models. I think uh, many young people are out here doing entrepreneurship and business they have not shown enough role model kind of uh, tags to the others. Maybe uh, if people are there asking, oh, how did you make this? How did you make this? We don't have fibs, like more uh, washiras with us who can tell us, yeah, start here, start there. They just tell you, uh, know people. They just know people. So when you tell a young person, just know people or know the system, what are you trying to tell them? So that has really uh, killed the passion for young people. And the other one is, um, it is also not too good enough in terms of the uh, where to start. And young people have gone online to get loans from Mshwari branch. Uh, today you get from Safaricom. The other day you are on branch 10,000. The other place you are getting from other place. And by the end of the day, you find someone has a loan of 200,000 and they have not paid any coin. So by the end of the day, they leave and run away. So it is also not very clear in, in terms of harmonization on how young people could venture into business and into entrepreneurship. It's not very clear again. And the last one was the youth again themselves are also not really ready to take up the challenge. We are out here crying about, let's get into agriculture, let's get into whatever. But no young person wants to get there. They say the jobs are dirty. Uh, is a problem. So, so uh, the, other, the other guys will laugh at us and it becomes a problem. So we are saying that we are looking to the policies. Yes, the policies exist, but there are issues either in terms of um, the attitude, maybe of those who are in the system and those young people out here who would love to take up the challenge. That is all, all we discussed. Uh, maybe if our members could add or any other person. Thank you so much. My name is James. Nice. That was wonderful. That was great um, analysis. So if you have questions for them, you can also post it on the chat. Now we go to the next group, group number two. How can the African youth build resilience in starting businesses in Africa? 
someone to represent them, please. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, my name is Selina. Um, I was the moderator for Group 2, and our question was, um, how can the youth build resilience for business in Africa? And we had uh, seven points, so I'm just going to rush through them. And uh, the first one was a uh, change of mindset. Uh, I think that is, uh, we have a mindset of... Um, Oh, sorry for that. Ah, sorry. Uh, so change of mindsets, uh, uh, creating opportunity for others that um, even when we get into business, our 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 duty is not only to build a kind of wealth for ourselves, but also to pave the way for others to to start up. Another one was being open minded and being willing to learn. Uh, kind of getting into opportunities of volunteering and uh, internship. Uh, have mentors in that field, people who, who you can ask questions, people who you can learn from their mistakes. Um, do not be afraid to start, um, no matter how small uh, the capital may be or how small the idea might seem. And also do not be afraid to stop when something is not working. Build stable networks. Uh, have, have a good team, people who you can ask who you can ask their honest opinions about your business, about um, people who you can loan money from, uh, have, a, have focus groups, um, be, be ready to adapt to market changes and, and, and adjust. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah that, that, that's what we shared. Well, that's nice. It's all in the mind. It's all in the mindset. Don't be a prisoner of your of your thoughts and ideas. Um, uh, for the group three, what avenues of funding do youth in your country have in order to start businesses? A representative, please. Okay. Uh, we came up with a few. One, uh, customer deposit. You can use that as uh, capital. And uh, that one I can say yes, because it also worked for my business. Uh, service business, you don't offer the services until somebody off makes a deposit. So it's a business that you can start with very little or no capital. Because uh, if people want a, a ticket or they want hotel booking, they have to make a deposit. Then uh, grants from friends. Like you can talk to your very close friends who believe in your vision and uh, who are ready to support your idea and your vision and then they give you the, uh, the little that you need to start your venture. Then also partnerships, you need to get somebody that uh, you, are, you, you have the same idea and you can work with and someone you can trust and then you put together the little you have. Then also investors, you can pitch to investors. Uh, during my, when I was employed, I would attend so many meetings uh, in Naila, Bumeta, Nairobi, Growth Africa, and I, where I met so many youths pitching their innovations to investors. And uh, in most cases, most of them would get funding or rather the seed uh, that they needed to begin their businesses. Then also employment. If you have such a big idea and it requires a lot of money, you can get into employment as you plan your exit. Then uh, there is also side hustles, like commission-based hustles. There are so many businesses that require people to market their services and their products, and you can do, the, do so at a commission. Then uh, there is the youth fund where you form a group and apply for the youth fund. I've seen people who have benefited from the youth fund when they come together as a group. The only limiting factor is that formation of a group. Then also loans with low interest, although I don't quite advise uh, on loans because you know, you're not sure this is a startup, it's at the beginning, you don't know whether it will kick off and then you'll start running around uh, you know, to pay the loan and uh, it might really discourage you and take a toll on you. But uh, an alternative is stable banking. 
where you come together with people and uh, you give money every end month of a or every two weeks and then you can borrow from that i've seen uh, youths and also women back in the village and they contribute as low as 800 shillings per, per month and then uh, those groups they tell you this is the amount that you can borrow in a month and you can borrow as much as 50,000 and with 50,000 you can do so much you can start a good business uh, with 50,000 yeah I think that's that's all we had from our group nice um, I like the fact that you have highlighted a lot of uh, sources of finance. For most of you who've done probably finance, you can understand um, the role of venture capitalists in this kind of thing. And I can see several comments. Uh, uh, one comment here about someone saying the loan you'll have to repay it back and uh, probably you're not sure if it will generate sufficient income when you, when you have your startup. And this could be true. There are those that have prospered from loans, but you must really have a defined uh, business plan, which you're sure is, is, is going to make the kill for you. And um, for the group four, are the youth ready for entrepreneurship and farming enterprise? Uh, can we have the representative? Uh, hello guys, my name is Ife. And for our discussion question was, are the youth ready for entrepreneurship and farming enterprise? We came to the conclusion that yes and no. Yes, in the sense that there are those youth who are ready and are equipping themselves with the necessary knowledge and resources to do entrepreneurship. And there are also those youth who are ready to branch into entrepreneurship and the farming enterprise, given that they are given the, the required resources. No, in the sense that the youth fail in terms of they lack mentors and they also lack a clear vision on what they want to do. Some youth usually jump from business to business depending on where the money is. That was all. Nice. I think everyone has had an interest in probably uh, maybe Phoebe you will sum up everything for us in terms of um, the discussions that we've had. Okay, thank oh, you so much. It? Yes. Sorry. Okay, thank you so much. I have learned uh, so much from each and every one of you and uh, such a, I, I would call such events or such uh, platform my happy place because I always love being uh, from teenagers to the youths. That's where, that's where I, I get uh, satisfaction and motivation and there's so much to learn from you. And uh, what I would like to tell you, you have so much potential. I see so much potential in our youth and uh, the future for Africa is our youth. And uh, so don't shy off, don't shy away from asking for help, for support and for mentorship. The people that you look up to and you see like uh, they have made it and they are very hard to reach. You just need to believe in your idea and also be confident because I'm one person who believes there's no one who is not approachable. Okay, I know there are some people who will like, you know, like not really create time for you, but uh, I also believe that if you believe in your idea and uh, you need to reach out to certain person, you can reach and uh, you can become all you want to become as long as you, have, you are passionate about it and you want to solve that need and you want to make a difference in life and you need to, to leave a legacy. And uh, partnership is working uh, big time. So don't work alone, work with other people, ask for advice, ask for, from those who have made it and also for those who are also in that journey, they will come in handy. And uh, when you feel like you're doubting, uh, there is the Google and there is also the people who have gone ahead of you. It's been great and pleasure having you all. And uh, there are so many opportunities outside there. You just need to position yourself in the right place and uh, you will make it and we will make a difference in our country, in our communities and in our continent. Um, and Phoebe, I, I think there are several questions here. Someone, uh, Salim, says, um, is it fair to tell the youth 
institutes that get loans from different areas, uh, they are supposed to pay up for these loans within a span of a few months. And uh, we all know it takes months and probably years for you to start generating efficient and reliable income. That is the first uh, question. Mm -hmm. Then the second one, he says, uh, wouldn't it be better if the government gives uh, the youth money once they are done with their tertiary learning, then they can get to work on their dreams without having the pressure of taking loans. And besides, once they start getting, once they start generating income, they will definitely be taxed. So I, I think if I have understood well from Phoebe, she, she says that she does not encourage taking these loans, okay? If you can find yes. alternative sources of finance, the better for you. But just don't get financing without an idea because you can have the money, but if you do not have a viable idea, we are not able to understand the lifespan of your, of your business structure, your business uh, idea. So it's doomed to fail. So that's why you find that um, for those who study um, venture capital and analysis, you realize like most of the startups, only like 3% see it through to, the, through to the last stage. 97 of them fail. Why? Maybe because of lack of uh, proper planning uh, secondly, motivation, which was highlighted, I think, both by you and by Esther. And uh, what is the other factor? Uh, probably lack of the entrepreneurial uh, competencies. So um, I see here a question. I think this is addressed to you, Phoebe. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the entrepreneurial competencies that you're talking about? Uh, I would say uh, one is the competence is uh, resilience. For you to be an entrepreneur, you have to be resilient. And also you have to be creative. To stand up against uh, competition, you have to be very, very creative. And you have also to be somebody who spends so much time online researching, listening to the clients, and also coming up with, uh, I mean, being innovative on how you do your business so that you can, you can offer something different from your competition. And then again, if an idea you have worked on it for quite a long time and it is still not working, uh, it doesn't mean you have failed. So you can always uh, seek for advice on venture into a different path if it has completely you know failed because you know there are people who really you know like you pursue it you pursue it it is not working because of so many things you know like there is regulations there is the climate change or you know there's so many things that affect businesses so even to say that i've tried and it's not working let me try another way or another business that doesn't mean you have failed so resilience, uh, creativity, passion, and partnership, and research is what I would say you need uh, in your entrepreneurial journey. Nice. Any other question, comment? I don't think there is any. So um, maybe someone from Africa for SDGs will say something before I close. So my name is Paris Francis. And I would like to thank all of you for joining this session. And tomorrow we will have another session on uh, climate action with regards to youth and Africa for SDGs. And I would like probably to close by giving a quote from a lady called uh, Jessica. And she talks about entrepreneurship. And in one of her speeches, she said that you have to see failure as the beginning and the middle, but never entertain it as an end. So you, you have to have that strong personality and start to believe in something and see it till the end. So thank you, Phoebe, for being with us. We, we, we've enjoyed the session. We've learned a lot from you. And I hope we've been able to pick one thing or another. And I hope we will not be the people that just come here and discuss. We will take this uh, onto our hands and get our hands dirty out there. And thank you to Esther also in absence. Uh, she had to run for um, another meeting. So thank you. Someone from Africa for SDGs, please. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, really, you guys have discussed was uh, really awesome. I think uh, so many young people right now can benefit from the information that have been given. 
and I really appreciate Sidney for the advice and everything that you gave. Also, for me, I always think uh, I've been told that fail. How you like to do? I want to thank every single person for joining us. Tomorrow we'll be having another one on uh, youth and uh, climate action. So I really hope that everyone is going to join us. I want to thank also the uh, the speaker of the days. I want to thank you guys. It was awesome. I really appreciate. And every young person who is here, please um, take uh, take the advice and also take the challenge and also be ready for the journey because uh, the entrepreneurship journey is very long. And there's no difference, let's say there's no difference between an entrepreneur and a person who is in prison. Number one, the system is against you. There are so many rules that are against you. And uh, number two, you have to walk and make decisions every single day. So I really appreciate Phoebe, I really appreciate Paris for your work. And uh, I thank you all. And uh, I think we'll meet tomorrow. Thank you. And have a nice day. Okay, thank you all for joining. See you in the next one. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.